there's never been a better time to have Sirius XM. With even more exclusive content, with over 150 channels in your vehicle, including the widest, deepest variety of music, ad-free. Root for your team. Get news. Listen to whatever makes you laugh. And hear all about your favorite stars. Your Platinum Plan offer includes more than ever before to enjoy online, on your phone, or at home. Create your own ad-free personalized stations powered by Pandora. Hear ad-free extra channels filled with music and enjoy a favorite shows with Sirius XM Video. Thousands of hours of shows and performances on demand. What you love is on now. So when it comes to car audio, Exile Audio is kind of fresh on the block. Coming off their success in the marine audio category, the industrial design and unique look and feel to the Exile Audio line has got some dealers pretty excited. And if you haven't heard about it yet, you've come to the right show. This is CMA Connected, presented by Sirius XM, Exile Audio, and it starts now. Hey guys, what's going on? And thanks for tuning in to this CMA Connected. I'm your host, Ben Wu. So Exile Audio, a brand you've probably heard of because they've made quite the big name for themselves in the marine side of things. But recently, they've gone on an aggressive approach, introducing a brand new, freshly designed lineup of car audio equipment. Now, what we've heard is that there's a lot of new stuff on the go, but there's also a couple of dealers that have had some great experience with it thus far. And we're going to be able to talk to some of these dealers towards the end of the show. But first, let's bring on their Canadian distributor and national sales manager for Trends Electronics, Mr. Grant McFadder. Good morning, Ben. Look at this shirt, Grant. You're looking sharp today, sir. I got, I got flying the flag today. Well, I see that. I see that. So welcome to uh, another CMA Connected with one of your favorite brands, no less, Exile Audio. Grant, I see, I heard that you just got back from a show uh, where you actually had a, a booth set up kind of representing Exile for the first time. Yeah, we did. Uh, we just did the Pacific Northwest uh, Expo down in Seattle last week, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday last week. We did the show, and it was kind of our launch in the U.S. market. So we've been selling it up in Canada for uh, when we got late last year, so probably around uh, I think August, September. So it was late, um, but we uh, launched it down there, and we had lots of eyeballs on it. it was, they said they had three hundred people at that show um, just in Seattle, so it was pretty good. Uh, definitely a lot of heads turned looking at the uh, design of the amplifiers. Our Marine obviously been around for a while, so we're showing that at the show. And, uh, you know, people recognized it and excited about all the different adapters and stuff we have for the tower stuff. But on the car side, there's a lot of guys going, well, those Marine? And we told them, no, it's car stuff. And we've got sub boxes and all this kind of stuff. And it was it was cool. Lots of, uh, lots of uh, people interested. Uh, we got a dealer signed up right away as well. So that's good. Always good to have uh, new blood. So that's a little bit of a unique, uh, unique strategy. I mean, uh, basically, I think if I'm not mistaken, Canadian dealers actually had some of the product even before some of the American dealers. Did I get that right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, the first, the initial batch, some of it went down to the uh, Portland office first, but um, mm -hmm. actually probably arrived close at the same time because whether it goes Fair to enough. Portland or, or Vancouver, pretty much close as far as shipping it goes. Uh, the strategy going forward is everything's going to come into Canada first. Oh. Um, so that our Canadian retailers don't have to incur the extra cost of the tariffs. So everything's going to come into Vancouver first. Um, we're tariff free in that on those products, and then we'll ship the uh, Tesla U.S. office whatever they need uh, for the U.S. side of things. So um, one of the cool advantages of that is Canadian dealers are actually going to be have a price advantage. Um, because we're not keeping that savings here. We're passing it on to our dealers. And um, you'll see that the U.S. pricing is going to be pretty much the same as Canadian pricing is. So it's if, if Canadian dealers go on, Canadian customers go on to uh, xlaudio.com and check out any of their products and look at the Canadian pricing, they're going to go, I'm saving wow. 30%. 
Very nice. Very nice. Well, that's always a very good incentive. But I mean, you know, it's a new brand as far as the car audio segment goes. And you brought some heavy guns to kind of back you up in the design and give some history and some uh, experience. Of course, I'm talking about the president of Exile Audio, Mr. Bill Hasbrook, who's kind of waiting in the studio. Why don't we bring him in to join the conversation? Bill, where are you? There you are. How's it going, Bill? Ah, hey, guys. Doing, doing uh, good. Excited to be here. I assume you were at the same show with Grant this uh, a week or two ago? Yeah, it was Grant, myself, and then Donovan Leader, who is our operations manager here in uh, Portland at the Portland office. And it was really good to get out and see everybody. Kind of, We haven't been to a show in quite a while, and it seemed like everybody there was pretty excited to see each other. And it was a good time. And I get to see some dealers that we haven't seen in a while. Yeah, I was I'm glad, I'm glad that we went. It was a great show. You know, some of the feedback that I've initially had back, because uh, we did do some sessions about Exile Audio a couple months ago before the product was even out. But some initial feedback is, you know, you guys are kind of starting from scratch, redeveloping a whole new line and a whole new category. But you're not coming in from the top down, if you will. Because let's, you know, in, in your marine line, you've got some intermediate, some good, better, best scenarios. You're kind of coming in at that entry level price point. So I'd like to hear the little bit of the, 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 the mindset behind the strategy. Yeah, it's kind of a full circle for us. Um, I mean, traditionally, we're a top down company. You know, our history is doing, you know, pretty top shelf product and trying to address, you know, kind of cutting edge technology. Um, when we first launched Exile Audio, it was a car brand. And then we were noticing that they were using our car products in Marine. So then we didn't really like that because a car product and Marine product have, have different uh, needs for the marketplace. So Marine was very big for us probably the last eight years. But, you know, our roots are in car audio and we're seeing um, a big need in the marketplace for products that kind of the entry level part of the uh, marketplace as far as the product offering, as far as having good quality, good looking, low profile amplifiers that are reliable and make, you know, honest power. We've always been a company that uh, always does the marketing from the true power standpoint. So when we say it makes a thousand watts, it's a, it's a thousand watt amplifier. So we wanted to take, uh, you know, some of our car audio roots, everything we've learned in doing marine product, because the marine environment is very demanding. And we've learned some things on how to make a product that is extremely reliable and also can, you know, handle, handle tons of abuse. So we're actually applying that back to car audio, but we're doing it at um, kind of the entry level price points really to give dealers some tools to help make them successful in a marketplace that with supply chain problems, it's very difficult to get some of the products that we are able to bring to market because of our uh, supply chain strategies that we're using of bringing everything into Canada. So we have containers coming on a continuous basis. We're able to get those supply chains figured out and we have very strong relationships with our manufacturers. So uh, we wanted to apply that to the car audio kind of uh, market segment and really kind of flex our muscles in getting back to our roots of some, some car, which is fun because we're all car audio fanatics. Very, very cool. Um, I want to add to that and, and one more layer before we get on the presentation. You know, I, I've commented in the past and now I'm starting to hear the feedback and we're going to hear about it today. But, you know, that industrial design component that was there from the get-go, from the onset, I had commented the first time you came on, Bill, I said, I don't know who your designers are, but this stuff is looking really sharp. It it's, shows its um, DNA uh, relatives in the marine side but yet has this totally new totally fresh look that you know you can call your own so i would like to you speak to a little bit about the industrial design moving forward on all the products that you're coming up with for uh, car audio yeah i mean industrial design really is the part of the marketplace that or as far as the product design um cycle that we find the most exciting uh, all the industrial design is done in-house uh, between myself and sean stuff who is our um, uh, lead designer and all the way down to the logo. In fact, when you look at uh, the logo placement and the, um, what we call the design language of all of our products, we spent a lot of time down to the finite details of actually when we developed the, the new Exile 2.0 logo, we actually developed it specifically to work on product of where the, the arms on the X are actually landing at 45 degrees because they work really well when you're going onto a subwoofer that either has to have four or eight uh, mounting holes. We wanted the logo to be very easy to use. We also wanted the entire amplifier to have a design language that was kind of worked um, 
holistically with the entire design. So when you look at the amplifiers uh, at the car audio level, you look at the amplifiers at the uh, marine level as we go up into our lineup, also all the way to the subwoofers and even the packaging. We've spent a lot of time on the industrial design to get the little details correct, like making sure that we're Pantone matching the orange shift logo here with the uh, logo that we use on the subwoofers. Um, all the way down to the backlighting on this LED uh, badge here. This is an electroform badge, so it's it's actually an aluminum badge as the Flycut Exile uh, text here. But then we did a light diffusion pipe underneath it to where we really worked hard to get those LEDs to not hotspot to give you that nice warm glow behind the, the badge. So when you install this in a system, it has a very uh, elegant look to it, but also a modern look. So that's really what we're bringing to the market with the ship series uh, car audio product is that elegance, but also being modern and relevant. Um, so as we move through our lineup on shift, which we have, you know, two channels, uh, four channels, five, six channels, five channels and three different model blocks. We're really giving a lot of tools to the dealer to give a good, reliable product at a price point that is really tough to beat. Yep, man. You said it. One, one of the things in that. The reason for doing the entry level stuff first was not only because mm -hmm. a lot of the industrial design takes a lot of time on the higher end mm -hmm. products that we're developing, but um, the market was asking us, you know, we need a, an amplifier that makes this much power to be this kind of price to compete against all the, um, let's call it noise out there. You know, I'm not going to drop any names, but, <laughs> but uh, there was a lot of price point sensitive amplifiers out there that claimed to be 600 watts and they might've been that when lightning struck it, but um, so we went to the market and said, hey, look, we can cut out a couple of people in the middle uh, with our relationships on the manufacturing side and bring this product almost direct to the market and <clears throat> give you a real 600 watt amplifier that you can sell for under $300, Amazing. you know, and, and, and be profitable with it. And the customer gets what he pays for. He's getting a real 600 watt. He's getting a base knob included in the box. And when you pick that little amplifier up, I mean, it's got some weight to it. It's not a, you know, not a paperweight. It's, it's got some girth to it. And uh, it's still, you know, and form factor is critical these days is fitting into locations. You know, we kept it as small. As it so, um, it was a little easier to bring it to market because um, the circuit boards and stuff like that were already done. The industrial design was pretty simple to upkeep. But that's why, you know, traditionally we'd come out with the, the flagship stuff first and then the, uh, trickle down but this was easier to do uh there was a lot less industrial design to do and less tooling to do on it so we did this first and it's been well, it's been awesome out of the gate well i'll tell you if anything it's wet the appetite i think that's what it's done right. and i think we're going to hear from a couple of dealers that that'll back up that statement there all right i think we've got the the basics let's uh let's go ahead and get into learning mode where you guys got a presentation we're going to go through the whole line um and when we come back for, for sure we're gonna we're gonna discuss the whole thing so i'll leave it to you guys Take it away, Grant and Bill. I can get my presentation to work here. So obviously we're going into uh, car audio products, which was the little uh, Camaro or Challenger we had on the screen before. But um, this is just a snapshot of some of the products that you've, you know, dealers will see or will see in the market very shortly. And then we'll go through them individually so you can see what we've done to kind of make them different and unique for the marketplace. Here's our uh, 212 enclosure. So we actually decided to bring some enclosures to market, A, because it's really hard to get wood and building an enclosure is such a time consuming process. So one of the tools our dealers were asking us for is we wanted a um, custom fabricated look. We wanted you know something that a customer could come in and look like something that we would custom fabricate in our shop but have, have it off the shelf so that they can, you know, do an install immediately on the spot, uh, get the customer a product that they know is going to be reliable, make a tremendous amount of base, but do it to where it still has kind of that custom look to it. So what you're seeing on the screen is the S212. So that's a dual 12 inch uh, vented enclosure. We also offer this in a dual 10 inch. One of the, some of the unique uh, things that you see on this design is We've gone for some chamfered edges on the side. We've also gone for some very subtle um, branding on it. We've got stitched logo here. So this is actually an embroidered logo on the side. So it's it doesn't show so much if it's in the back of a hatchback or something. It's not going to say steal me. 
On the front baffle, we've uh, done a, a very subtle uh, embroidery here of the Exile logo. So we've done some industrial design and branding on the enclosure, uh, but try to keep it subtle. The other thing we've done is we've added these chamfered sections here on the top. We actually have a cutout in the center, which from a cosmetic standpoint, we re really like the way it looks and it gives it that custom appeal. But one of the other benefits of doing both the chamfered edges and then this knockdown uh, section in the middle is it actually acts as a brace also because this is stiffening these top panels. So instead of having to use internal bracing, which takes up airspace and more complicated to manufacture, um, and also more expensive, we've actually added a design element on the outside that's functional and gives you additional rigidity in these upper two housings right here. So it actually makes it work like two individual 12 inch boxes as opposed to one big long panel on the top. So you're not getting any flex up on the top panel. Um, same thing on the front panel here. We actually have a small little bit of a, a recess in the front panel here that just adds a little bit of additional stiffening to the front panel so that you don't get, um, you don't get any vibrations in the wood. We're trying to translate all of this cone movement into moving air as opposed to the cones moving the baffles of the enclosure. Um, so that same design philosophy goes into both the 12, goes into the dual 10, which you're seeing on the screen here. We also do single versions of these. These are all vented enclosures. They have a trapezoidal vent on the side. Um, you can see here in the 10 inch design and the 12 inch design on the screen, they also have the vent that's coming out. Uh, it's kind of hard to see on screen there. Um, so this is where the trapezoidal vent comes out, you know, standard uh, push pin binding post on the side, very clean uh, design. And once you get this in a vehicle, it really does perform. And a lot of end customers look at it and think it's a custom manufactured box when it's really something that you can just take out of the box and uh, sell immediately. Um, another offering in our enclosure line, this is where we've, we've gotten a lot of call for this, is slim enclosures. Um, the nice thing about a slim enclosure is just, it's kind of the unicorn woofer that you can kind of put anywhere you need to. A lot of trucks, this will fit under the rear seat. Hatchbacks, you can just throw it in the back. It either down fires or you can sit it up as shown on screen. Um, again, a lot of industrial design on it. We've got the chamfered corners. We've got some feet that um, space it up for down firing, but the feet also give it a very elegant look where it almost has kind of a high-end home theater look to it. So if you put this in a vehicle face down, we don't have a big giant logo on the top of it. So if you look in the rear window, you don't necessarily know that that's a subwoofer. We wanted it to kind of stealthily hide inside of the vehicle. And then, you know, if the customer wanted to turn it up on its side to be able to kind of show it off if they're just hanging out with their back hatch open, um, you can kind of use it in both ways. This is offered in a, they're both 10-inch uh, designs. It's offered in a passive version, and then it's also offered in an active version that has a built-in 250-watt subwoofer amplifier that we actually designed from scratch, the plate amplifier, to give you a true 250 watts that, um, has thermal management and up where you can run it all day long and you're not going to thermal the amplifier. These ample, these uh, slim boxes get difficult to put an amp in because there's not a lot of airflow for cooling. So we actually had to develop the plate amp based off of uh, the existing car amps to uh, give the performance that we want, but also have the thermal uh, stability to be able to play and not shut down. So here's the uh, passive version. Again, you can see the, the Exile logo on the edge of that chamfer. So it's, it's branded, but still stealthy at the same time. Um, some of the other features on the slim, slim woofers are difficult to do just because you don't have a lot of space uh, as far as depth wise. You also don't have a lot of air uh, space inside of the enclosure. So one thing that we did is we've gone to an aluminum cone on the front dish there. And that aluminum cone gives us uh, a lot of rigidity. It's also very lightweight. It allows us to do some industrial design um, on the front cone to give it, you know, an expensive look. Custom tool gasket that goes around the outside of it that ties into that logo design that we talked about earlier, which is that not round shape where it's, it's a circle, but not a circle at the same time where it has those chamfers at the 45 degree. Um, the other benefit of that aluminum cone is it does provide some heat sinking as that voice coil and the former are getting very hot and creating a lot of hot air underneath that dish. The aluminum is able to wick that heat out into the open air to where the convection cooling of the woofer moving back and forth helps to self-cool that coil. So that's how we're able to get 
all day performance, um, thermal performance out of this driver by trying to get as much of that thermal energy out of the enclosure as possible. Here's a picture of it in the down fire mode. Very stealthy, very elegant when you put it in an install. So it, it, it does have a high end kind of a, a custom design look. And that's really what we were going for in this design. Um, the entire lineup, again, we've, uh, we've tried to address all of the major parts of the marketplace, really give amplifiers that dealers can be successful with. Um, customer comes in and they can design a system for it. We've got an amplifier for just about any system topology. Again, every one of these amplifiers has a feature set that is um, specific for addressing different uh, system designs out there. And then really design these to have great thermal management also. So even if you're stuffing it under a seat, these are very efficient amplifiers that don't create a lot of heat. So if you're pounding on it all day long, even when it's not getting a, a lot of air across it, um, they will not shut down. One of the other key features that we put into the amplifiers is we spent a lot of time really optimizing the protection circuitry. Protection circuitry can get kind of uh, finicky on amplifiers because you're hanging different loads off of the amp. So the goal of the protection circuitry is to protect the amplifier and also protect the woofer if it sees the situation that it deems uh, to be um, something that's going to compromise the reliability of the system. So there's a fine line between it turning off too early and turning off too late. If it turns off too late the, and you have an, a, a subwoofer that's gone to short circuit, um, if the protection circuitry doesn't take doesn't um, catch that, you can start taking out the output devices on the amplifier. So you need to have a protection circuit that can clamp down immediately if it sees a problem, but also not clamp down too early to where there isn't really a problem but you send the customer out and a half an hour later, you get a comeback because they're like, hey, my amplifier shut off. So we spent a lot of time really looking at at what point do we turn the amp off to protect it? And that's what's given us um, that long-term reliability that we're looking for to uh, just help dealers do great installs, send product out and not have it come back. As far as the lineup, we've got a four channel amplifier. Um, it's uh, 70 by four and a four ohm. Um, 240 watts uh, into uh, four ohm double bridged. If you uh, bridge mono both sides of those, we've got a 600 watt mono block. Again, true true power, 600 watts uh, into two ohms. Again, we're we're going up on the mono blocks because different systems require different amount of power. If you're using a single woofer, you can go you know 600 watt. If you're doing a two, uh, dual woofer, we jump up to a thousand watt mono block. We also have a 1500 watt model block. So the, the three different models can adjust to basically any system design you'd have out there. <clears throat> we also have our um, five channel amplifier, which is our um, kind of a derivative of what we've done in Marine. We have a, a Marine amplifier called the Javelin, which is a five channel amplifier that we've had just such success with. It's one of our kind of unicorn amplifiers. Um, we've brought some of those concepts into the five channel amplifier for car where we're um, the difference between a car amp and a, and a marine amp is we're just pulling back on some of the marinization and waterproofing that we would do. But we're still doing some of the things that we've learned through marine into the amplifiers just to make them um, as reliable as possible. So if you are doing it in an install to where the trunk has a little bit of extra moisture in it down in the uh, spare tire well, um, these amplifiers, you know, have designed to be as, as reliable as possible. And that five channel is a derivative of, of what we're already doing in Marine. So tons of success with that, being able to have good power on the backside, 500 watts at one ohm, uh, sorry, at two ohm, five, 500 watts RMS on that back channel to run a subwoofer, then obviously another four channel built in to run, um, either a dual mono situation or run your front and rear stage in a car. So. Really good, robust lineup that we're, our dealers are having a lot of success with of just being able to have the right tool for the system design. A new product that's coming out this year. Again, we're, we're, we're kind of building from the bottom up with, with Exile Car. Our shift series is um, an, a, a line that we used to make for Car Audio that um, we're bringing back. That's where the name Shift comes from. It's one of our original products that we launched in 2004, 2005. Um, uh, moving up in the line, we're going to have a hybrid amplifier called the XMP. That XMP amplifier is what was currently replacing and will be replacing our existing XM amplifier. This is a product that's designed, we call it, a, you know, kind of a hybrid design. It's designed for both car and marine. 
uh, when we get into that series, we do marinize all of those products where stainless steel hardware, conformal coated boards, all of the switches are military grade so that we don't have oxidation issues with the um, gain controls or the slider controls. All of that has been marinized, but still this product is um, not specific just for marine or car. It's a hybrid amp that you can use in both. So everything that we do on a marine amplifier is totally applicable to a car, but sometimes it's just overkill if you're putting it in a situation where, you know, extra moisture is not that big of an issue. So what you're seeing on the screen here is XMP. What we've done with XMP uh, is we kind of, we do a lot of uh, research installs here at our factory. We have a mobile install engineering section that I hang out in and get boats in as new uh, boat models come out. And I'm constantly getting in boats, putting amplifiers in. And, you know, there's frustrations when you're putting an amplifier, not only in a boat, but in a car underneath the seat. Once you've built an amp, amp rack, it's very difficult to get to uh, controls that are on the end. So what we've done on the new XMP is we moved all of the controls to the top panel. So once you've done that install, you basically can take the top cover off. And you'd have access to all of your high pass, low pass, gain. Any of those type of controls are easily accessible from the top panel. Then you put the top panel back on, it totally covers all of the controls, gives it a nice clean look, and then it also keeps the customer from easily getting in there and adjusting the uh, settings once you tune the system in. Um, so here's kind of a look of what XMP will look like. It's obviously as a family look with the shift series, same exact badge as we move into all of our new products. This is the design language that we're going to use on um, all of our new products where we've got that that backlit glowing Exile logo um, kind of front and center on all of our products. So if you have multiple amps in an install, even if you were mixing, say, an XMP amplifier with Shift, they both look like they have some of the same lineage and some of the same design language. Um, one of the key features on the XMP, as you look at here, is we've got a uh, die-cast aluminum end cap on it with the Exile logo in it um, on the end cap there, it, it allows us to do some different things because all of the controls now get on to the top of the amp and all of your connections are on the side of the amplifier as opposed to the end cap. This makes installation very easy. Um, with that raised section, you'll notice on the corners, the amplifier is actually raised up about a half of an inch off of the uh, amp rack. What that allows you to do is, number one, get some airflow underneath it which is very nice just to make sure that everything is breathing and you're not getting any moisture or uh, uh, mildew growing underneath the amplifier. But most important thing from a usability standpoint is it allows you to, when you do your connections with your power ground and remote, your RCAs, your speakers, you can now loop them underneath the amplifier. So you basically just cut a hole under the amp where you mount it and all of your wires can self dress underneath the amplifier. So it makes um, doing your wire management much easier and much cleaner as having that option without having to use separate spacers. The spacers are actually built into the end cap. There's also a raised section on the end cap itself to where if you needed to bring some wires in from the side of the amplifier, there is a cutout there to where you can loop some wires in from up underneath over in that section that Grant's pointing out on the screen. So we really tried to think about, uh, be very cognizant when we're doing our design features of building um, design elements and being purposeful with these little elements to not only make the, the industrial design look good, we want all of our features to be functional um, and really make it easy in the real world when you're going to install it. Um, one other feature that we're offering on this, uh, here's some, some rundown of what the lineup's going to be, is it's a four channel amplifier, makes big power, 150 by four of true power into uh, and do two ohm load. We've got a 30.2, which is a large two channel amplifier. Those are getting hard to find. We use them quite often in our Marine series for tower speakers, but there's a lot of great components out there for uh, vehicles that if you put big two channel amplifier on a set of quality components in a car, uh, dynamic range wins, having power and having that extra overhead of extra um, dynamic range and headroom with the amplifier. A, a good big two channel is tough to beat. Uh, we're kind of old school in that aspect of power wins. Um, and then we're doing a six channel and a five channel in this series. So the five channel is the Javelin replacement. That will, uh, that'll be a large four channel amplifier and then a true 800 watt into two ohm load subwoofer amplifier also under the same housing. So that's kind of your one amplifier, do everything install. And the 800 watts off the backside of that amp is legit. 
We're also doing a six channel. Uh, I know it, uh, a lot of people think the, the, a five channel and a six channel are the same amplifier. They are not. The six channel uses the same topology for um, the three different amp sections that are in it. So the front, rear, and then whatever you're using the third channel for can be all the same exact power, or you can also bridge the backside of that if you wanted to use that for a subwoofer channel also. Um, so we are going to do a five and a, and a six channel version of that. And then initially just one mono block at 1200 Watts, um, just to be able to round out the XMP lineup. And that should give you between shift and XMP, a very robust lineup of amplifiers that should work in just about any system. Grant, you want to talk a little bit about what we're doing with our dealer networks? So this is more on the U.S. side, but uh, as it's shown on the map, but um, on the Canadian side, anytime we get a lead in from our office or the XL office south of the border, we will actually call up, we'll call the customer back, find out what he's looking for. Uh, in some cases, we'll actually build on the design he's, he's thinking of buying as an end user and then we'll flip that deal to a authorized dealer. So there's been several instances where a guy phones up and he's looking for a set of tower speakers and I'll talk to him or Donovan will talk to him on the uh, US side and we'll add an amplifier, we'll add in a ZLD, which is his own line driver um, slash EQ piece to it. Uh, we'll call up a dealer and say, hey, I got this guy that's interested in buying this product. Uh, he wants to buy it direct. We're gonna run it through you. Are you okay running his credit card for two thousand dollars five thousand dollars whatever the case is and yeah more often than not the dealer says yes please so um and this is just um a, a tool we're going to use on a mapping uh, on the xl website if you can you can offer it to buy it direct um but anytime we get a direct dealer um sorry sorry direct customer uh, with a dealer locally to them we're going to refer that all to the dealers we're not going to sell it direct to the end user in the odd case where the customer is in uh, Timbuktu or somewhere where there's no dealer within 100 miles or so from him, then we will honor that direct uh, relationship with the customer. But uh, the strategy going forward is any leads we get uh, on the website, uh, on the web store, uh, whether it's a phone call, we're going to be passing that off to authorized dealers. So, you know, it's it's we're generating the leads with our social media and all that kind of stuff, and we're going to pass those deals on to you. So I think it's a huge benefit. And then... When you go to look at the pricing on the product or buy it, it'll uh, ask you if you want to buy it from an authorized dealer near you, and it'll, sh it'll populate the map and show you, uh, you know, where those dealers are next to you. So I think it's a pretty cool tool. Um, so far, it's been working awesome in Canada. And like I said, we're just launching it in the U.S., and the feedback has been awesome. Uh, dealers kind of like that. You know, we're doing all the work, and we're flipping you over the deal. you got to swipe this credit card. Usually, it's a pretty good, pretty good deal. Yeah, it's, it's been working out great. We're excited to have, get some dealers on and be here to support them, not only support the dealer from a technical standpoint, but also be able to provide support from a sales and lead generation standpoint. We think that's a key part of our being successful is, is being a partner with the dealer and really using what we're doing with social media and what we're doing with our website to drive traffic to the local dealer. That's, that's a focus that is very important to us. Ben, where are you? <laughs> hey, guys. There he is. Sorry, I was just taking my notes here, ready to You're uh, on your coffee uh, break. ask you a couple of questions. Yeah, I was on my coffee break. No, I was paying keen attention. I got a couple of questions. Um, first of all, uh, congratulations on the new line, if I haven't already said so. But uh, oh, thank a couple you. of things I want to circle back to. I want to talk to Bill. You know, the unique design on those enclosures, I have to make this comment. You go into a shop, there's going to be different enclosure options, right? You're going to see the stack of different boxes and so on and so forth. Anybody would look at that and, and look and say that that must cost much more than your standard enclosure. But I mean, just the attention to detail, the fact that it's not a perfect square and there's different angles to it and there's, you know, an inset and there's embroidered logos and so all these things that you mentioned make it look like a premium product. So how like whether that's smart on your part or how you guys figured out to do that in a cost effective way i mean these things look custom that's my comment I'd like to hear what you have to say about that yeah that was that was 100 percent the goal on this is not just have it be you know a, a 
big square box that you toss a woofer into. We wanted to actually design the enclosure as if we would design an amplifier or design the cosmetics on a speaker. We wanted to throw our entire industrial design process at the enclosure itself. Because once you've done the design, the manufacturing, the actual bill of materials on this is not that much more expensive than just the good old standard flat-sided box. Um, so we, we spent a lot of time on the industrial design to just make it very unique and then also make it functional. All of these elements of the resort, re recessed front baffle and all of these cutouts, um, again, they also add structural rigidity to the product. So uh, the key to having a good subwoofer is, you know, not just the subwoofer design itself. The enclosure is a key integral part of how the system is going to perform. So all of these things add together to not only look good, but also perform at the highest level you can at a affordable price. We really wanted to build as much value into this product line as we possibly could. And this is how we do it, is flexing our, our muscles from an industrial design and acoustics engineering standpoint to give a product that has a lot of value. Um, on that note, for, as far as performance goes, you'd mentioned, uh, Bill, that the active versions of those enclosures um, share uh, some similar uh, engineering and, uh, amplific and the amplification side of things. Um, is it really a, uh, the same type of amplification or do we expect more if you go separate? So I just want to hear the difference between the performance on the built-in active versus the separate route. Um, so the built-in active amplifier, uh, a lot of the active subwoofers out there that have just an amplifier shoved in them are using just kind of off-the-shelf amps from whatever, wherever supplier, somebody, uh, uh, an enclosure supplier can find. They'll just go to some amp vendor and say, hey, we need to shove an amplifier inside of this box. Because the people that build subwoofer enclosures are rarely the same companies that build amplifiers. So they have, a, so an enclosure company would have to go and source an amplifier. What we did is we created a partnership between our manufacturer that builds our subwoofer enclosures, the manufacturer that builds the subwoofers, and the manufacturer that builds our ship series amplifier. Um, we were able to get you know those three suppliers to work very closely together so that each individual supplier can focus on their expertise. If it's an amplifier designer, a subwoofer um, manufacturer, or an enclosure manufacturer, we're spreading the expertise to companies that specialize in that and then bring it all together in a finished product. So the amplifier that we're using in our active enclosures is a derivative of this same amplifier that you'll see in the 600.1, the 60.1. It's the same manufacturer that builds this is building the amplifier that's going into our slim boxes. So that way we have control over it. And the amplifier we're using is coming from a legitimate amplifier manufacturer as opposed to just some random slim ample plate amplifier that you find off the shelf. Right. Um, in our, in our testing, the off the shelf amplifiers make, can make the power. They just don't have the thermal stability um, to be able to play all day long and not shut down. So that's where we focused is on the reliability of sending the product out in the field and not getting a comeback. We want, so, we want the product to go out and perform. So tonally, we should expect the same type of tone, same type of output, same type of performance and reliability. Cause really it's a derivative, like you said, a derivative of the, um, the separate component. Yes, yes. Same okay. preamp section that we're using on this. Same manufacturer that builds this whole line of product builds the amplifiers that go into the active subwoofer enclosures. Okay. My last little note that I just wanted to give a little tip of the hat to was that design on the elevated feet on that amplifier. You know, a marine situation, power sports situation, even car audio situation, uh, A for the airflow, but the fact that you can now set up a floating style installation whereby it's just the amp by itself and just having the wires tuck under and, and hide away, that makes for a lot of creative opportunities uh, when it comes to the installation side. Makes wire management so much easier. Uh, mm -hmm. We've been doing similar something on our XM amplifiers. We provide in the box some rubber feet. We encourage people to mount the amplifier on the rubber feet uh, from all the, for all the reasons you just discussed. Um, but we got so used to that, being able to put the wires underneath the amplifier that we designed the new amplifier. We're like, let's just build it into the design of the amp because cosmetically we like the way it looks, but functionally it's my favorite part of the amplifier because it makes installation so easy and wire management's tough. And if you can hide it all underneath the amp, it, it makes it a breeze to make the install look clean. 
Well, I'll tell you what, I that was my little tidbit to make it sound like I know what I'm talking about when it comes to insulation. <laughs> but really, our next guest that we're going to bring on know a lot more than me. We're privileged today to have two retailers join us in our conversation to kind of bring them in and get a little bit of their feedback um, on everything, not only that we learned today, but also real life, real time uh, sales and installation of your products. I hope you guys aren't too nervous. You don't look nervous. No, but these are two no. guys that certainly know what they're doing. Um, I love at this time to kind of uh, get them on, uh, get their feedback, and get everybody on here so we can discuss it. Let's start. And this is a treat. We actually have a Canadian dealer and an American dealer coming on to the show. I think that may be the first time we do that. What's going on, fellas? Welcome to CMA Connected, all about Exile Audio. On the bottom here, on your left, if you're looking at the screen, is Mr. Ray Choi. He's coming back again, of course, owner of uh, FX Audio out in Alberta. What's going on, Ray? Hey guys, great to be on. Thank you for having me. Um, currently, right now, I'm just sitting on my lanai in Maui. It's uh, my wife and I were having our 19th anniversary, so uh, brought the whole family down and stuff like that. We're going to spend a couple weeks here, but I felt this was important and I needed to make time for it. Uh, Exile Audio is a fantastic product, and uh, you know, very happy to support it and stuff like that. So, thank you for having me. Thank you for coming in to us live from Hawaii on your anniversary vacation, Ray. And of course, the gentleman on the bottom right may not need an introduction, but I will do him the courtesy, of course. He is none other than Mr. Jason Kranitz, owner at Kingpin Car and Marine Audio. Thanks for joining us again, Jay. Hi, everybody. How is everybody doing today? We're doing fantastic. Well, I good. see you're at the shop good. at the classroom. Yeah, yeah. We're getting ready for uh, a big uh, in-person training event this weekend, so... Well, that's amazing. Uh, gentlemen, we've gathered you here today. You had a chance to sit in the back studio, kind of listen to uh, Bill and Grant's presentation about the car audio line from Exile Audio. I guess my first question, I'll start with you, Ray. You've had the opportunity to kind of sell this product through your uh, shop for the last few months, anyhow. Um, what has been the feedback and how's the performance and turnover of the product been so far? Well, it's been absolutely amazing. Um, a couple of things that uh, you guys have already talked about is, uh, I mean, Exile Audio has amazing money value. Um, bar none. I mean, we've kind of compared it to a, a couple of other mainstream brands and stuff like that. And uh, money value wise, I mean, at that price point, Grant was talking about the $300 mark for like a 600 watt amplifier, for example. Uh, nothing else comes close with, you know, base knob in the box. It actually performs, does what it's supposed to do and stuff like that. The quality of it is fantastic. Um, I think our opening order was uh, 24 of those units and stuff like that. We've gone through probably just, just over half of them already. Um, the stuff literally sells itself. Um, to give you an idea, I mean, I guess our first order was like actually a full pallet, to be honest. Um, quality is superior the you know, in, in comparison to most other brands and stuff like that. Reliability. Um, I think Bill talked a little bit about it in regards to the protection circuitry and stuff like that. We'd sold one to a customer who had a uh, subwoofer. And let me tell you, these things, the amplifier puts out a ton of power because he came back the next day and said, hey, I got a little blinky light going on. And here it was, he blew up his subwoofer. I mean, it was an old woofer and it was tired and stuff like that. So it made a good you know, transition from there to sell a, a new subwoofer and stuff like that as well. But overall, you know, if, if you're a retailer and you're not selling this product, you should get on because there's a, a ton of money to be made on it. The The product sells itself. Very reliable. So super excited. All right. Very good. Ray, Looks sounds like you've had a lot of success with it. Let's go down south to uh, Nevada and see how Kingpin has been doing with the product. Jay, how's it been for you? It's, it's been fantastic. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump back in time a little bit, right? So I've known Bill and Sean and Donovan, um, for, for many years, uh, Exile was, um, they started a couple years for my business, and uh, but I've, I've worked with all those guys in different capacity throughout the thing. So first of all, the, the, the enclosures, and I'm so glad that Bill brought up um, as being, you know, a fabricator and I teach fabrication and an X installer of the year, uh, the design of the box is super awesome, right? It gives you that really custom look. And that's the first thing, exactly what I saw when I saw the enclosure itself. But the rigidity part, I'm so glad you brought that up because I was going to bring it up if you didn't. Um, of the actual shape, it gives it the cool features uh, that strengthens that enclosure so much. Um, and I don't think people really realize that um, you can't beat the looks and you can't beat the performance for the money on it. So you, you are also on the same page as Ray, whereby the value proposition of these products is certainly shined in your showroom floor. Uh, Grant, what do you think of these comments so far uh, uh, as we start this discussion? 
it's nice to hear it. And that's the, that's the response we're getting from a lot of other retailers across the country and, and south of the border as well as we get going down there. It's, it's a unique looking product. Um, it takes away from having to explain um, the brand because it's not known as a car audio brand. It's been, it's been away from car audio for close to 15 years. <clears throat> so it takes away from the, the having to explain the brand. The guy goes, that looks cool. Tell me about that rather than looking at the, you know, the regular trapezoid from another brand they have yeah. sitting on the floor. And I, I, the, I'd uh, like to comment industry. on that a little bit. If, sure. Yeah, if, go can ahead, I just make a quick comment? Sure. Absolutely. You know, like, uh, so in, in retail and stuff like that, a lot of things that we talked about is we never get a second chance to make a first impression. And let me tell you, like, Exile has a fantastic first impression. You, you look at it and it looks the part, if that makes sense. Um, I had made, so I'll, I'm going to comment on this as well. I was talking to Bill and Grant in the back scene, and I said, you know, when you see a car, a new car come out, and you heard the the, 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 the phrase, man, that thing looks fast sitting still. You know what I mean? It just parked there, it looks fast. I'm going to say that Exile arguably has that kind of mojo about it, whereby it's just sitting there, it's not even plugged in, and it sounds like it jams. Just the way it looks. Oh, yeah. Right, and, and I think that to that point. Uh, Jay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shift gears a little bit quickly to you. Um, you know, you mentioned one thing about the rigidity as far as uh, helping with the, the enclosure. Uh, but what other unique features have you seen uh, that really help the brand sell through when you're talking to that customer? Nope. Jason? Oh, I think Jason froze. Let's go to Ray. Oh, no, Jason's there. We'll let him speed up. Ray, I'm going to go to you with that question. Okay. Features that we're talking about? Well... I can attest to the protection circuitry being awesome. Um, and, and, you know, again, back to the, the value quantity or quality product and stuff like that. We had a customer that had a uh, blown up 900 watt amplifier um, at two ohms. So we took that amplifier out and we put one of the, uh, the Exile 1000 watt amplifiers, which produced 1000 watts at one ohm. And I think it's around 600 watts at two ohm. But let me tell you, this, the 600 watt output at two ohms was far superior as far as sound quality output um, you know, the way that it jammed, all of it just worked way better compared to the 900 watt previous amplifier. So, you know, when I, I tell you that it's a good product, it certainly is. And like I said, again, at the beginning, the, the product really sells itself. When you build a good, solid product that has good reliability, good presentation, good value, it's easy to sell. You don't even need to, you know, once you present it to them and say, hey, listen, this is this is what you're getting for X amount of dollars. They're like, okay, sold. And, and away we go, right? So. Interesting. Jason, if we have you back, I'd love an opportunity for you to comment on that um, as far as any unique features that really help sell through the audio, Exile Audio product. Oh, he's frozen. We'll, we'll try to get him back. Oh, no, no, he's oh, there. there. He he's there. Wait, it's just his internet. He's kind of there, kind of not he's there. Kinda there. <laughs> kinda there. Well, you know what, Bill? I'll get you to jump in on these comments right now uh, as far as what you're hearing from a retailer. Uh, I know you have a smile on your face, but I'd like to hear your comment on it. Well, it's, it's fantastic to hear feedback from the field. You know, we try not to develop our product in a bubble. We really do try to develop it, taking feedback, not only from our dealer network, but from us physically getting into vehicles and getting into boats. I still love doing installs. It's what keeps me up to date with the new vehicles that are out there. Um, it's really nice to hear that the, the features that we've built into this product is resonating with the marketplace, because that really was the goal with this product line was to give good value, but also bring some um, unique feature sets to the table. Uh, hearing Jason, I mean, any, you know, any accolade you can get from a customer, you know, one of the most prolific uh, custom fabricators in the world to be able to, to really get on board with why we did some of these things. Um, you know, we're not trying to take away the custom installation business. We're not saying that, you know, you shouldn't be building custom boxes, but there are customers that you just can't afford to spend the time to build a custom fabricated enclosure. But you don't want your brand as a as a retailer to be just, you know, throwing square boxes inside of a vehicle. So having something like this allows you to get that quick sale, but still give a customer a custom product without having to spend the entire afternoon building an enclosure. So that's why we yeah, wanted so, I mean, to bring I, some of that, some of that features into this. I mean, I, I'd like to comment about that. I mean, as a shop owner and stuff like that, we always talk about things like you know, time management and stuff like that. And if you look at it this way, there's only so many hours in a day. And if you can spend five hours building a box or spend five hours installing an amplifier, or a head unit and installing a box, which do you think you make more money on? Right. So uh, it just, 
you're just way more productive in the install bay. And 90% of the stuff that we sell and install and, and even build, I mean, the prefabricated stuff, especially something like your product, that's a nice solid construction, has a ton of output, performs like it's supposed to, fits all of those criteria without the extra time value that's you know required to build a custom enclosure and or the dollar value you know related to that. And you still get the same output at the end of the day, right? So, you know, just to say it's fantastic to have those products. Very, very good. Grant, would you like to chime in on this fact of hearing the retail actually experience the things that you're hoping they experience? It, like I said, the, uh, you know, it's nice to hear the positive feedback because that's the goal in the first place is we're, we're developing these products so that we have something different, something unique, but also it's not pie in the sky. Not everyone's coming into your store. I don't, we don't want to take away from a guy that's coming in to spend 20 grand on a system with multiple DSPs and anything else like that. We're, we're, we want to take care of that first time customer. I mean, my, my first experience is what got me into this industry. I sat in a car with some six by nines and an amplifier on. And I thought I'd never heard anything that good. Uh, and then when I heard a subwoofer in a car, it was like, I'm hooked. And, you know, I start off as an enthusiast buying gear and work my way into the industry. And, and our industry needs young blood in the market. Let's, let's face it. Um, there's a lot of us guys with gray hair that are still, still <laughs> slinging boxes <laughs> and not a lot of young guys. I mean, uh, Ray's, Ray's one of those guys that, you know, he's a, he's a shop owner, but his son is actively involved in the business. And you talk about a keener, that boy is keen, man. Like he's, he's got the, the uh, FX audio running through his bloods for sure. So that's yeah. what I like about it is we've got to get the, you know, we've got to engage that younger customer or even that customer that just wants something, a simple base upgrade. Maybe it's a guy our age that, you know, his wife won't let him put, you know, a custom sub box in his car, but he still wants to have some bass to listen to his black I don't sound. know. That, that, that slim, low profile one, I think we could hide pretty good. It's pretty yeah, low profile. Easily like removable, too. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this, the shallow box is a fan favorite, for sure. We sell a ton of those shallow boxes. And the active ones Ray, are on the way, so we'll, 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 we'll be getting lots of those in stock. Nice. Uh, Ray, I want to finish with this question. Um, you, sure. you, you touched on it, but... Um, here you have the president of Exile and the national sales manager there. Here's your chance. No pressure, though. But what are some comments or feedback or suggestions, creative criticisms that you have uh, for the product uh, maybe moving forward? Well, I mean, XMP looks amazing. I mean, th this was my first look at it. Um, I love a, a bunch of the stuff, like the design features. Having all your connections on one side makes it, you know, really easy to do a lot more installs or gives you more flexibility in doing installs, I should say. It doesn't make the install any easier. Everything needs to get routed to the uh, location, stuff like that. But instead of having to deal with, you know, wires on either end, you just deal with one location, which is fantastic. I love the fact that it's got raised feet so that you can, you know, tuck some of the wires underneath there. It also gives it some breathing room and stuff like that. If you're mounting in a location, that maybe you're doing an underseat install of an amplifier and you might get a little bit of moisture on the floor from time to time, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you're not worried about it, you know, sitting on there and waking up into the amplifier and stuff like that with a traditional amplifier where the feet are at the same level as the bottom. You, you mount it down to your, your mounting board or whatever the case may be, but the moisture is on the same plane. So those are some really fantastic, you know, features in the amplifiers that I'm looking forward to utilizing. A um, couple things that, you know, you might want to throw in there. Um, something with staggered power. I see a lot of, uh, you know, uh, uh, systems that we're doing nowadays is uh, fully active. Uh, so if you did something with staggered power, that way the tweeters get a little bit less. Uh, that way you get a little bit more to the mids or a mid base. Um, you know, depending on how you're going to, you know, work the system and stuff like that. Okay. Um, an eight channel amplifier would be uh, fantastic. We do a lot of, uh, you know, BMWs, Porsches, stuff like that, where they require a lot of channels of output and stuff like that to, to facilitate that. Boats is another common one where you need eight channel amplification. Um, and then, you know, for us crazy base head guys, you know, a 10 or a 15 or a 20,000 watt amplifier would be awesome as well. But, you know, <laughs> I'll, I'll start, I'll start with some of the more readily available stuff. How's that sound? Uh, That's Bill, great feedback. Bill, get on that twenty thousand watt monoblock yeah. stack. Hey, Quick. careful what you wish for. <laughs> Bill, go hey, ahead. I I'll give you every opportunity to respond to these requests or suggestions. Yeah, you no, know he no, came from the feedback. place that had table size amplifiers, right? Remember that yes. Phoenix Gold thing that was I do like remember that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 No, big amplifiers are you know, uh, it's you got to have some whoopers to go with it. You got to have the alternators and the power wire, and uh, that takes a whole system approach that uh, if the market bears it 100%, we can go as big as we need. We have, uh, we have working prototypes of, you know, up to 5,000 watts, and these can be strapped up to 10,000. 
Um, we just have to see the use case for it and, you know, and make sure that the market could bear the amount of quantity it would take, you know, the minimum order quantity to be able to build an app like that. Um, but I like your comments on the on the raised feet on the XMP. There's, a, you know, it's not just the design element, it's functional. And, yes, you know, the under, the under seat, particularly, you know, a lot of times when you're mounting under a seat, sometimes you have some vents under there. It's not always a flat surface. And having those four mounting locations makes it easy to get it underneath a seat to where maybe there's a little bit of a vent where you need a little bit of a, extra space for that amplifier to s straddle across it. Um, that raised section, without making the amp super tall, obviously that amplifier is a little bit taller than the shift amplifiers. So if you've got the room under the seat, and I've noticed on most modern cars, there's a tremendous amount of room under a lot of them, particularly in the SUVs. You've got a lot of space under there. But there's also a lot of vents and there's a lot of wiring that goes up to the seat and the uh, airbags. So having that little extra space to be able to bring wires through um, on the XMP, I think, is going to make is going to be another tool in your toolbox as far as making installation easy. And then when you look up underneath we, there. I don't think we talked about the stack kit we got coming for the XMP amplifier, no. too, so you can stack them. No. So Yeah, you, one other thing that. we did. Yeah, we didn't show on screen there, but so the four corners of the XMP amplifier, we've got basically, we've got four anodized inserts that go into those corners. You take those inserts out, mount the amplifier, and when you put the inserts back in, there's another M4 thread inside of that insert that we are going to provide a stack adapter to where you can put like-size amplifiers on top of each other. And we also have a stack plate where you can take a large amplifier like this and stack a smaller amplifier on top of it with a stack adapter plate. Um, this becomes super important in a lot of installs where you just don't have a lot of room um, as far as surface area on the amp rack. So being able to go vertical with two amplifiers just allows you to get um, that installation flexibility. We've actually seen that a lot in Marine to where they'll have one large two, amp, uh, two channel amplifier to run two pair of towers um, if you want to go to a third pair of towers, you have to add another amplifier. Well, a lot of times you don't have room to add another two-channel amplifier. So with the stacking option, you can basically plop a new two-channel amplifier on top of the other one. And now you are able to give the customer the um, upgrade to their system that they're looking for within the space constraints that you're dealing with. And it's staggered enough to get you the access to those top controls still, right? So it's a, it's a step-up stagger kind of. Hard to explain like without drawing. Staggered, it staggered stack, yes. Like a step. It's a staggered stack that gives you access so you don't lose any of the access to the panels or controls or whatnot. I would expect no less, honestly. If, if it I'm did, looking I'm forward to seeing that. Yeah, yeah, looking forward to that. That's going to be exciting. Ray, yeah, and that's not uh, a it's not a feature that we just made up for, you know, like, like just threw it in at the end because we thought it would be cool. We're, there's a use case for it. We run into it a lot where we just don't have room for another amplifier. So that's that's why we we felt this was important on XMP. Sounds good, Ray. I can't thank you enough. Are you yeah, you're doing that. Okay. Look at this guy on his, uh, on his I know, man on his anniversary uh, vacation, and he's talking about car audio. Yeah, do we totally appreciate easy. you coming in. It's really nice. I want to say thank you, panel. Ray. Say thank you to your you're wife welcome. for letting you do this on your on your vacation as well as your anniversary. Happy anniversary, and uh, thank, thank you. you for your feedback. I think that was tremendous, and I'm sure the guys at Excel here uh, appreciate it. So we'll see you on the next. We one. do. Thank Thanks you very much. Hundred percent. Take care. Thanks, guys. All right. So, I mean, that was a great roundtable. We had Jason from from Kingpin for a bit, got his feedback, and of course Ray, uh, some really great detailed feedback as well. Uh, just to wrap it up, Bill. Um, Looks like, you know, there's a lot on the go. Can you give us some idea of where this is headed? Because it looks like uh, the machine is moving quite rapidly. Yes, it is moving rapidly. And we've, we have a lot of products in development. We gave you a little sneak peek of XMP. Um, obviously, the next step for our car audio lineup is we want to start adding um, additional uh, raw subwoofers. So right now, we're not selling these tens by themselves. We're going to be bringing in the tens that go in this enclosure as raw subwoofers. And then we're also going to be bringing them up into more power. This is a, a two-inch voice coil um, woofer. We're going to go into a two-and-a-half-inch voice coil, both uh, stamped basket and cast basket designs. So we'll keep ramping up so that we've got, you know, your 300-watt subwoofers, your 600-watt subwoofers, your 8s, your 12s, you know, maybe even a 1,500-watt big, big boy subwoofer to hang off of some of our 1500 watt mono blocks so we need to have some we need to fill out the line with subwoofers and we're you know we've got a lot and of there's, i mean there's some subwoofers. beefy subwoofers on the marine side so i can only imagine what this is going to look like once you get to the 
you know. Yes, and you'll see consolidation between car and marine. Um, there's a lot of crossover between the two. Obviously, uh, a marine amplifier can be used in a car. We're, we're going to start doing some, um, some crossover between the two. Uh, there is a version of the shift amplifier that's coming out that's going to be uh, marinized. So it's the same housing, same look, but we're adding some marinization to it. Um, not only for the marine use, but there is a lot of use in side-by-side -side and Powerful. a lot of use mm -hmm. in Jeeps. Um, especially the off-road market and the motorsports enthusiast market. Uh, and then a lot of vehicles that, you know, have some moisture ingress. Uh, sometimes it's nice to have an amplifier that you know you can put into a soggy trunk. If, uh, you, if you think the customer is going to be kind of, you know, abusive to it from a moisture standpoint, lean towards more of a marinized product, but still have this same form factor to it. Um, we hate to kind of not use what we've learned in Marine and not apply it to everything but still provide good value. So where we can take some of those robust reliability features that we use in Marine and apply it to car, we're going to do it as long as we can still give good value for the product. Fair enough. On that note, I want to remind our listeners, if you're interested in finding more about Exile Audio products, um, you can get to the website, exileaudio.com. That's where you're going to find uh, pretty much everything you need to know about Exile Audio. And on that note, Mr. Bill, we'd love to say thank you for coming in today. Thank you. Once again. I appreciate the time. Thanks, Bill. And yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see you money. on the next one. Take care. I'm gonna get to get to designing quick, quick. Get to design. I'm on <laughs> yeah, it. I think he's done I'm a lot of that. Uh, take I'm care, on Bill. Uh, Grant, that was a good one, man. It was nice having uh, Ray and Jay on, uh, even though Jay was a little brief, but we had him on and he, he said what we needed to hear him say. Um, some great feedback from Ray over at FX Audio. And uh, it looks like this is a brand that's going to really, really have some some legs under it, um, you know, for, for both Exile for Trends as well. It's getting it's getting a lot of momentum this time of year. I mean, we like I said, we, we got it in late last year, so we missed a lot of the traditional Canadian car audio market because we start car starters in August these days. So, um, you know, ramping up into the spring and if we ever get some good weather on, on the West Coast, um, I don't know, you guys have had some decent weather a little bit, but not bad. Um, with some better weather, um, we've already seen some ramp up in, in excitement in the product, and it's it's selling really well. Dealers are happy with it. It's reliable. doesn't break. Um, if dealers do it, they get a two-year warranty. If an end user does it, oh. you get one year. So we're trying to encourage that they get it done by an authorized Open dealer, dealer mm -hmm. installed properly. Um, yeah, man, we're excited about it. And like the future is the future is looking good. I'm, I'm behind the scenes on a lot of the, uh, the new product development. So I, I get to see, and I get to keep, try and keep my mouth shut as much as possible on what's coming, but there's lots of good stuff coming. Uh, for more information, you want to get a hold of the folks at trends electronics. If you're a dealer looking to become a dealer, uh, dealer inquiries, make sure you visit trendsinc.com. Grant and his team are working hard to not only have product ready to go, but bring more product because it looks like they're selling like hotcakes. Grant, that was a good one, man. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, buddy. Take care. All right. want to remind you to continue tuning in to CMA Networks right up until Friday, May 27th, as we go day by day uncovering another car audio brand, one brand at a time. It's the car audio sessions, as you see, featuring some of the top brands in the industry. Uh, this is going to continue beyond this. We have lots of brands to present, but this is our first, uh, we'll call them grouping of brands right through till Friday, May 27th. Also, if you haven't checked it out already, cmanetworks.com. That's the home of our new videos. You can search for all your favorite videos and literally hundreds of videos, uh, either by category, by brand, or even your favorite trainer. Check out my man, Bill Hasbrook, or even Grant has his own profile on cmanetworks.com. That's it. Thanks for tuning in to this CMA Connected presented by Sirius XM. I'm your host, Ben Wu. Until next time, we connect. Stop it. Roll it down. I am. You don't need a car to listen to Sirius XM. You can listen anywhere. You know that, right? What? Kevin Hart's left What? Radio. <laughs> Kevin, you could use your phone. What?
What? Alexa, play Kevin Hart's Laugh Out Loud Radio on Sirius XM. What? This is how I know you're getting old. I guess that was it. What? <laughs>